Hello, my name is Drake Cummings, and welcome back to Game Dive. Today, we're going to be talking about platformers. Let's get started. I love platformers. I think it's a genre that we don't get enough of these days. And so when there was a Kickstarter for a game called Ukulele, a old school 3D platformer, I eagerly gave them my money. I uh, <laughs> paid $15 American, I think. It was the lowest tier I could pay and still receive a copy of the game. Uh, it was a digital copy. I always prefer physical, but physical was not available at the time. And uh, when it did become available, I just like, I didn't, um, I didn't do it in time. Like, I didn't act in time to upgrade my package. And so uh, I did get the uh, digital copy of the game when it came out. And uh, I don't, so I, I've played through the game now. I feel like I've, can speak about it. I don't love it. <laughs> I, uh, I don't hate it either. Um, but I also, I don't want to tear into the game either. There's a lot of people out there telling you why ukulele is bad. And I don't, I don't think it deserves all the hate that it's getting. Um, it's just, they do a couple things wrong. And so instead of specifically tearing ukulele apart, I want to talk about a platformer that I love and talk about a platformer that I do not love and talk about what they did right and wrong and how that uh, compares and relates to what ukulele did right and did wrong. And so I am, of course, calling the segment The Good, The Bad, and The Lele. <laughs> Let's get into it. The 3D platformer that I love is Spyro the Dragon for the original PlayStation. And the 3D platformer that I do not love is Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage, also for the original PlayStation. Um, <laughs> Uh, it introduces elements that I guess on paper sounded like how you would escalate a sequel, but everything that added was just, it seemed to be the antithesis of platforming. Uh, Spyro 1 is a game about jumping. It's about the joy of jumping. It's about how much fun can we have platforming. And so everything in Spyro 1 feeds into that general idea. Uh, and Spyro 2 constantly bogs you down with side objectives that are mostly at odds with the joy of jumping, I would say. Spyro 2 constantly slows down the pace of the game with unconnected activities like ice hockey or just an abundance of dialogue of random NPCs that don't really have a purpose. And typically I love dialogue in video games, but neither Spyro 1 or 2 are trying to tell you a Shakespearean tale or anything like that. They're simple stories and they fit for the kind of game Spyro is and the vibe of Spyro. And so the first one did not have a lot of dialogue and it worked for the game. The second one had more dialogue, but very little of it felt like it was adding anything to the experience. Um, if Spyro 2 had been trying to tell a more complicated story, and it is slightly more complicated, but if they had been trying to do more with it, or we're going in a different direction narratively than I can understand. But essentially, it's a very similar story, and it's... The dialogue seems intrusive. It seems like they are adding, trying to add context uh, to things that the world could have done with its world design. And in fact, I would say that Spiral 1's world design uh, does more for telling a story and telling the story of that world than any of the dialogue in Spyro 2. But it's not just the extra dialogue that slows you down, it's also all of the random activities that you seem to have to do now. And so a lot of these could be considered side activities, but they give you orbs, and you need these orbs to unlock the final boss, and you need to get most of them to do that. And so most of these side activities are not side activities, they are the main objectives of the game. Uh, throughout each world, uh, you can do extra things in order to get these orbs. And more often than not, these extra things do not have to do with platforming. They are activities like ice hockey, or herding sheep, or chasing down dinosaurs that are trying to eat people. Just a bunch of different things that just don't involve jumping. They don't involve the act and joy of platforming. And so they slow down the momentum that the game has been building uh, by bogging you down with things that are the antithesis of what you are playing that game for. Let's take the section where you play ice hockey, for example. It's boring, it's slow, and you can't jump. 
this is still a 3D platformer, and they put in an activity where you actually cannot jump. And I mean, you wouldn't need to jump in ice hockey, but like, why is ice hockey in the game? Because it's not integral, integral to the world of Spyro 2. It's not like Blitzball. Blitzball is intertwined in the world of Final Fantasy X. It's a key element of Spira. Ice hockey is not a sport that people just play in Spyro 2. It's unconnected. It's in the back of this other level. It seems like it could have just been any colder, icier level. And there's really no good reason for you to play it except for you talk to an NPC and he says that you can because there's an ice rink that's there. And it's frustrating because you can have extra auxiliary activities that complement the core design of the game, that complement the platforming. Spyro 2 didn't have this have to be Spyro 1 with different levels. They could have added things that increase the joy of jumping. And to put my money where my mouth is, I am going to include a design document that I wrote for this video. Link in the description. Uh, go check it out. It is for skiing. They could have added skiing to this game. Instead of ice hockey, they could have put skiing in this exact same level, in this exact same spot, and it would have been so much more fun. It would have contributed to the, like, to the platforming element of the game because skiing is something where you can add jumps and you can add his other extra powers that you use throughout the rest of the game integrally into the skiing mini game that I have written a design document for. There's everything in it. How it function, why it's fun, how it contributes to the design of Spyro 2. Link in the description, check it out if you don't believe me. See, because Spyro 1 understands what's fun about its game. It has secrets to find, it has extra things in there, and you learn about them by exploring, and you explore by jumping well. You learn things about the game, you learn, you find its secrets by being good at jumping, and by doing jumping, which is what a 3D platformer is about. It never gets boring in Spiral 1. You never feel like it's played out. It is fun from the moment it starts to the moment the credit rolls. There are challenges in that game that are completed through platforming. There's this one thief character, who has these eggs. And when you get all the eggs, you get you know some extra bonuses. It's one of like the collectibles of the game. But you have to chase down this, these thieves and like tackle them or hit them with fire in order to get the egg. And these are some of the most challenging things in the game and they are platforming challenges. The thief is running away from you and he is very fast. You have to be good at platforming to capture the thief. And they're some of the hardest challenges in the game, but they are all fun. <laughs> And not to say that Spyro 2 doesn't have some sections like this, it does. There are still fun moments of jumping in Spyro 2, but they are undermined by all the dumb, boring activities that have nothing to do with platforming. There's another section in the game where you have to uh, attack these dinosaurs that are attacking like these villagers. So like dinosaurs are cracking out of eggs and walking over and trying to eat the villagers. And so you have to get to each of them in time and then torch them in order to, you know, just to kill the dinosaur, to stop them from killing the villagers. And while you do jump a little bit in order to complete this, it is not a challenge built around jumping. It is a challenge built around repetition, memorization, and trial and error. There's really no way to know what order these eggs are gonna hatch in, and there's a bunch of them. So you just have to like learn the order and then just get really good at getting it exactly right. It, challenges you, but not in the ways you want to be challenged in a 3D platformer. And it may seem harsh to harp on a game for a few bad sections, but it's not just a few bad sections. It is almost half of this game are these dumb, weird side activities that do not contribute to the joy of jumping. And so that brings me to ukulele, and a lot of what I don't like about Spyro 2 is present in ukulele. And I don't think it's quite as bad in some regards for ukulele, that is why it is the ugly in my good, bad, and ugly analogy. But it is a game that is not as focused on platforming and jumping as it should be for a game that is meant to be a throwback 3D platformer. Just like in Spyro 2, Ukulele has a lot of weird auxiliary activities that don't complement the design of the game. Uh, you're pulling roulette machines and trying to play giant golf with really bad golf ball physics. And like, roulette at least makes contextual sense. It is in the casino world uh, and you do literally have to jump to do it, but it is missing the point entirely. It is taking what is fun about jumping out of the equation and just focusing on literally having to jump. 
And why is there giant golf at all? I don't, what is the context here? This is a game that lacks context in a lot of regards. That's a whole nother thing. But like, there are no giants in this world and there is, there is a giant golf, two giant golf ball courses. Like there's one in the casino world, there's one in the final world. And like, why? And like, it's, it's not fun. It is not fun to have to push this giant golf ball with these terrible physics into the hole at the end of the course while also getting attacked by enemies. Uh, and they, they did it twice for some reason. Someone sat down and was like, yeah, this giant golf ball thing is fun enough that we'll have you do it twice. And it wasn't, it wasn't fun the first time. And it was, it was so much worse the second time. And then probably the most frustrating task in the game uh, at least from a design perspective. Frustrating in how poorly it was designed uh, was in the ice world, there is a section. Uh, first of all, there is a castle in the ice world and like there, to my knowledge, there's no throne room and like there's no mention of a king. And so like, why, why does this castle exist? Who lives in this castle? Um, what is its purpose in this world? Again, just the context of ukulele is, is absent at best. There is one room in the castle where you go in and it's all dark and you have to lick this uh, thing to make yourself glow. That's one of your powers. You can lick a thing and then you can glow. And then you can explore the room, but it doesn't light up that much of the room. And there's a lot of things about the room. There's some details. There's some uh, torches on the wall. There's some crates. There's some barrels. And to get the page of this room, the challenge in the game is to get the pages. And to require the page in this room, the page asks you really specific details about the room. And you have two choices at this point. You can continuously try to guess the answer to these choices. Uh, or you can spend way longer than you want to to memorize all the different details of this room just to answer the questions. And maybe this wouldn't be such a bad activity or puzzle or you know quest in like an adventure game but this has nothing to do with jumping nothing this has no business being in a 3d platformer this doesn't add anything to the game it is frustrating in its design because it is so tone deaf to what ukulele was supposed to be and i mean i'm not a developer of the game maybe this is what they thought it was supposed to be but if you're creating a 3D platformer, especially with the intent of it being a throwback 3D platformer, to include so many non-platforming activities in the game is ridiculous. And there are some moments in the game that are legitimately really fun, good 3D platforming, but they are constantly undermined by the way you are, have to go about doing these. So I spoke about Inspire 2, how there was a lot of intrusive dialogue, but it's honestly not that big of a deal. The dialogue doesn't last too long. It doesn't pop up that much, and I do understand what they were trying to do. They wanted to let you know that there are people in this world outside of the monsters who are terrorizing those people and kind of get a sense for each one of their individual cultures and each one's like individual little space and kind of what you were doing by completing the world. And so it was, it was annoying and ultimately unnecessary, but I understood. In ukulele, the fun platforming is constantly undermined by the like mission-based structure in which you are allowed to platform. So when you get into an area, you have two options. One, you can run around and have fun and explore and not find all that much or find a lot of locked chests and not understand how to get the page inside. Uh, or two, you can canvas the area for NPCs to talk to that allow you to go and get those pages. And so... Every, almost every page, especially all the ones that are focused around platforming challenges in that game, uh, you are allowed to do those by talking to an NPC. And the NPC talks for way too long. There is no voice acting in the game, so you just have this grueling like sound bite going. Like there's this annoying sound from whatever the thing that is talking is supposed to be. So like if it's a pig, it's going to be oinking. If it's a bat, it's squeaking. Stuff like that. And the dialogue goes on for way too long for how annoying everyone's voice is. And you 
have to sit through this in order for them to let you go get the page by telling you what you're supposed to do to get the page. And none of this is necessary. None of this adds to the context of the world. You learn very little by talking to these people. It would be so much more organic and kinetic if the pages were just existing in the world and you platformed to get to them. And that is how you collected the pages. But the platforming is constantly roadblocked by all the dialogue in the game that stops you from really getting into any kind of consistent flow. Here's the thing, I still want a ukulele too. I would really love for them to make a ukulele too that is more about jumping, that is about being a platformer and doesn't constantly slow you down with all this other stuff that is not the joy of jumping. And so that's really what I want to get to at the end of the day for this is a good 3D platformer is about the joy of jumping. Spyro 1 understands that. It gets the joy of jumping. Spyro 2 lost that. And then Ukulele is just very confused. There are moments of good platforming in here, but it is constantly stopped by all of the other non-jumping things in this game that are unnecessary and slow you down. So that's what I want to end with today. Thank you very much for watching. There's going to be more Spyro related content coming actually. Uh, I started a new series called Design Corner where I focus in on a smaller aspect, a very specific element of a game's design. Uh, I did the first one on a puzzle in God of War 1, and now this time I'm going to talk about the world design, which I briefly talked about in this uh, episode but didn't really get super into. So it's going to be about the world design of Spyro 1 and Spyro 2 and how it is so much stronger in Spyro 1 uh, it's, uh, it's a shorter video. I hope you check it out. Uh, thank you for watching.